They marched with determination to the Karim Shalom border as they have for six weeks. Their mission, to block international aid from crossing into Gaza. The border police are waiting for them. There is a danger of sniper fire and projectiles, the officer warns. I ask you to leave this place. But the protesters are undeterred. Made up mostly of hostage family members, former reservists and settlers, they ignore the order and change course to move closer to the crossing. So you can see the trucks with aid over there. The police had been trying to stop the protesters, but then they've just cut through this field and they're pushing ahead. How can anyone check these trucks and see what's inside? Where bags of rice that are meant to go to their children are filled with bullets. Under international law, it's Israel's obligation to make sure that the ordinary citizens of Gaza don't starve to death. And right now they are starving to death. Hamas is making it very difficult because Hamas is not allowing this to rise. The are they, they're not holding well. it. They're not, not receiving it. But they do it. I'm telling you here and now. If we knew it's getting to children of Gaza, we would do it. This does not arrive at the doorstep. This arrives into the tunnels of Hamas that are fighting us and holding our hostages. No one There's would. no evidence to support the idea that all of this aid is going to Hamas. Not to the rest of the population. This is intelligence only for terror. That's why they're getting they should get only the minimum calories required to survive. They're starving Teal. to death. They are not they starving. They are starving they to are, death. They are, they you know what? If they are starving, starving to death, give us back, give the hostages back. No a single uh, loaf of bread should go there till our hostages are coming back. To many people in the world, listening to what you're saying and what you're protesting for, it sounds like A, a contravention of international law, and B, incredibly callous in the face of an epic humanitarian catastrophe, in the face of children starving to death. People can't understand why anyone in their right mind would advocate for stopping aid. Hamas has no fair play. Hamas has no rules. Hamas is holding civilians. You know, even if there is a humanitarian crisis, there, and there is not, even if there is, it's my right and my duty to prioritize the life of Kfir Bivas, a one-year-old baby that is there over any Gazan baby. And with that, the interview is over as the protesters press on. Previously, they've managed to block aid trucks from crossing. But on this day, the police have been given their orders and no one is getting through, prompting anger from the crowd. You are confused. Go deal with the war, this woman shouts. We came to help you. Unable to cross here, the protesters try their luck in another area. But the authorities are just as quick to stop them. So the police are now really starting to lose their patience. They've been trying to push these protesters away for hours now, and still they're not leaving. The crowd on this day is small, but their sentiment is shared by most people in the country. A recent poll by the Israel Democracy Institute found that 68% of Jewish Israelis oppose the transfer of humanitarian aid into Gaza. On the other side of the border, the situation could not be more dire. Seven-year-old Fadi Al-Sant is suffering from severe dehydration and malnutrition. Doctors at the Kamal Adwan Hospital say they don't have the resources to properly treat him. Fadi's mother says she's already lost two children, but she doesn't want to lose him. According to Gaza's health authorities, at least 17 children have died of dehydration and malnutrition already. And with the UN warning that famine is just a step away, there is hardly room for debate. More aid needs to get to more people as quickly as possible.